the last thing we have to do is put our Jacobian matrix all together. Remember that the Jacobian matrix has these two parts, the linear velocity part and the rotational velocity part. We already calculated both of these parts. I'm just going to go back and get each one and stick them on top of each other. Here's the linear velocity part, the part we did most recently. I'm going to take that part and put it on the uh, top of the Jacobian matrix. So here I've taken that top part, and now I need to go back and get the bottom part. The rotational velocity part was quite a bit simpler than the linear velocity part. I'm going to take this matrix and put it on the bottom of my complete Jacobian. And now here we have the complete Jacobian matrix. We can see that this matrix has the correct dimensions. It should have six rows, which will correspond to the linear and rotational velocities of the end effector. And it has three columns, one for each joint, which we can, uh, we can now multiply this matrix by a three by one vector, which contains the velocities of each of the joints. We're going to use this in class to uh, practice figuring out the velocity of the end effector given the velocity of the joints.